If there's no objection, I think we'll begin this. Um, I'll announce a speaking order. Um, after I finish, Senator Collins was the main co-sponsor. She will be next. Senator John Thune uh, of the Committee of Jurisdiction. Uh, Senator Chuck Grassley, uh, chairman of the Judiciary Committee who got, uh, who held a hearing and marked up a bill. Senator Bill Nelson, also a co-sponsor. From the House, Representative Lois Frankel, Representative Susan Brooks, and from gymnastics, Jeanette Antolin, former USA Gymnastics National Team member, Dominic Mociano, 1996 Olympic gold medalist, former USA Gymnastics National Team member. Then we will have Jamie Dancher, 2000 Olympic bronze medalist, former USA Gymnastics National Team member, Maddie Larson, former USA Gymnastics National Team member, and Nancy Hoghead, uh, maker, CEO of Champion Women. I'd like to start by telling all of you about a day. It was February 1 of last year. There was a meeting scheduled with eight survivors of um, some harassment. I didn't quite know what to expect. I knew it involved Larry Nasser because I had read the Indianapolis Star piece. Uh, there, as it turned out, there were six former gymnasts and two other student athletes, including Joanne Antolin, a former USA team member, Maddie Larson, a former USA, as I've said, gymnastics national team member, Jessica Howard, a former USA Gymnastics team member, Jamie Dancher, um, national team bronze medalist, and <clears throat> Jeanette, Maddie, and Jamie are here with us today. The minute I walked in the room, I knew something was different and something was very wrong. I walked in the room, I saw paralyzed faces, big wide open eyes, and um, women that were almost, but they weren't, almost shaking at the table. I particularly saw a 28-year-old former gymnast sitting there with her husband and with their baby in her lap. And she was crying. And so I knew that something was very different. We spoke for more than an hour. We talked about what happened to them and how USA Gymnastics and the adults charged with protecting them failed at every single turn. The meeting made clear that USA Gymnastics was fostering a culture that put money and medals first, far ahead of the safety and well-being of athletes. At the end of the meeting, I promised these women that with their help, we would do our best to pass legislation, and we went to work to write a bill. Those reforms, which I'd like to speak briefly about, are only possible because these women have been so courageous. They decided to come forward, they shared their pain, and they did everything they could to see that what happened to them would never happen to anyone else again. Today would not have been possible without the women standing here. And women, today is your day. I'd also like to thank Dominique uh, Mociano, the 1996 Olympic gold medalist. She's been one of the strongest voices in support of our bill and reforming the culture that led to these abuses. Now, everybody knows it's not easy to pass a bill through this Congress, and so really be proud. It's been done <clears throat> in a short period of time. Members that wanted to put something else in the bill realized the importance of getting this done and deferred, and we hope it's coming over from the House today. It's a Senate bill, and that it'll be passed again in the Senate um, today. So Susan Collins, Chuck Grassley, and introduced our bill in March, and we had 25 Senate co-sponsors. As I said, the chairman held a hearing on our bill the same month, and it passed the Judiciary Committee in May. The Commerce Committee, led by Senator John Thune and Bill Nelson, also held a hearing. 
we spent the next six months working together to fine tune the bill, which was passed by the Senate in November. And as I said last night, the bill does four main things, just quickly. It addresses a patchwork of state reporting laws, making it mandatory for anyone affiliated with any national governing body or amateur sports organization that crosses state lines to report sexual abuse to local and federal law enforcement or social service agencies within 24 hours. <clears throat> it was 36 hours. We want it right away. Every organization will have to know that. It's a reported within 24 hours, it goes to law enforcement. This would apply to USA Gymnastics and each of the 46 national governing bodies that oversee a variety of Olympic sports. It would also apply to college athletics. The bill makes clear that victims of child sex crimes are entitled to statutory damages of $150,000, as well as punitive damages due to the heinous nature of the crime. The bill extends the statute of limitations, so it doesn't begin to run, and this is significant, it doesn't begin to run until victims realize they've been abused. This is especially important in the case of young women, 12, 13, 14 years old. They didn't know that what happened to them was sexual until later in life. The bill makes reforms to the Ted Stevens Olympic and Amateur Sports Act, which established national governing bodies like USA Gymnastics. It requires the newly created Center for Safe Sport, championed by Senators Thune and Nelson, to establish strict policies for preventing abuse and procedures for handling allegations, as well as oversight procedures to make sure that every national governing body adheres to these policies. For example, every governing body would be required to implement principles to make sure athletes are not alone with adults in situations that could be compromising. Before I turn this over to Senator Collins, I want to thank the advocates and supporters who are here today. Of course, Nancy Hogshead, maker for Champion Women, who did so much. Rain, who helps. Rain, who helped so much with this bill. Child USA, the American Academy of Pedi Pediatrics, the National Survivor Advocates Coalition, the National Child, Child Abuse Coalition, National Children's Alliance, Child Help, the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children, the Child Welfare League of America, and the National Center for Victims of Crime. Give them a big round of applause, please. <clears throat> and now, my main co-sponsor, the wonderful Susan Collins. Thank you. There you go. Thank you. Thank you very much, Senator Feinstein. First, let me thank you for your leadership. You gave a long list of those without whose support this never would have passed, but you were the one who stepped forward, and I really want to thank you for your leadership and shining a spotlight on the atrocious crimes perpetrated against young American athletes. I also want to thank my other Senate colleagues who are here today who played such instrumental roles and also our House leaders who have joined us as well. But most of all, I want to thank the very brave young athletes who have come forward and spoken about their personal experiences of sexual abuse. Thank you for shining a spotlight on this horrendous crime. 
All of us who followed and were riveted by the courageous 157 young women who came forward and testified and gave victim statements at Dr. Nasser's hearing know that they not only ensured his conviction for his despicable crimes, but also exposed a system that allowed him to prey on young women and girls, a system where allegations of sexual abuse were far too often ignored or swept under the rug. That will end with this legislation. When we first introduced this bill last year in March, it followed the investigation of the Indianapolis Star, which reported that more than 360 gymnasts had alleged some form of sexual abuse at the hands of their coaches, gym owners, physicians, and other adults working in gymnastics. Predatory coaches moved from gym to gym undetected by a lax system of oversight. The legislation now passed by both the Senate and the House, as Senator Feinstein emphasized, would require amateur athletic governing bodies like USA Gymnastics and other US Olympic organizations and all adults who interact with minor and, and amateur athletes to promptly report every allegation of sexual abuse to the proper authorities. I think that's the most important provision of this bill. And by promptly, we mean promptly, within 24 hours. Those adults who are responsible for the safety of young athletes must be held accountable. And that's what our bill will do. The young athletes who train to represent our country at the top levels of competition and those at all levels who aspire to compete should not have to fear victimization by trusted coaches, trainers, doctors, and sports officials. And I believe by taking this legislation forward, and I can't wait, to see it signed into law, that we have taken concrete action in response to the brave athletes that we see here who exposed a thoroughly corrupt system. So I thank you so much for your courage and for speaking out. And thank you, Senator Feinstein, for your Susan, leadership. I'm just gonna grab this list and keep everybody <clears throat> I think we have John Thune right, next right, in your you. chairmanship. Thanks, Dan. Thank you, um, Senator Feinstein and uh, Grassley, for your leadership on the Judiciary Committee, Senator Collins, my colleague on the Commerce Committee, Senator Nelson, and our colleagues in the House for uh, all their work in uh, helping to get this across the finish line. Um, you know, we first started looking into this issue in the Commerce Committee last March after the conviction of the USA Taekwondo coach and then started to team up with the Judiciary Committee. They were doing a similar inquiry, uh, which uh, ultimately produced the bill that uh, Senators Grassley and Feinstein uh, helped get across the Senate floor. We looked at our process, came up with a bill to create a Center for Safe Sport, which we thought complemented what was happening with the Judiciary Committee's bill, and so those got married up on the floor, and we ended up passing it and sending it to the House, where. Uh, they passed it by a big vote last night. We're very excited about that. The funding for the Center for Safe Sport um, got taken out in the House, but uh, we will get that uh, we'll get that addressed in another way. But I'm just uh, looking forward to this bill moving across the Senate floor, passing and heading on to the President where he can sign it into law. And um, I just want to again express uh, my appreciation and, and say how grateful I am, as has already been pointed out, uh, to our athletes for your courage. Thank you for coming forward. Um, you know, I think anybody who participates in sports, particularly at this high level, 
knows when they go into it that there is a, a risk, potential risk of injury. Uh, they know that they're going to have to take the risk of seeing how they stack up against the best competitors in the sport. And obviously they go in with the knowledge that they're going to have to work hard. But they shouldn't ever have to go into a sport like this and experience the, ty the types of things that these young athletes experience. That is just totally unacceptable. And we as a Congress and the professional sports and college, collegiate sports and Olympic sports have got to get the message uh, from this. And I think this legislation certainly helps move us in that direction. And I think that going forward in the future, I would hope that the courage, the bravery uh, displayed by uh, these young athletes will also send a message to other athletes that they never fear coming forward and reporting these sorts of things when they happen. And should have sent a message to all, to all adults out there that there isn't anything that they do in athletics that is as important as ensuring that they respond when a young athlete reports abuse like what we've seen happen here. So thank you all very much. And uh, again, I'm very pleased to be a part of uh, moving this legislation forward and to look forward to seeing it acted in law, signed in law by the president. Thank you. Thanks, Thank ma'am. Thank you, Senator. Senator Grassley. Yeah. <clears throat> I suppose I could say amen and sit down. Uh, but first of all, thank you to Senator Feinstein for her leadership, and thanks to the House members as well for their leadership. But you folks have made a difference. I think cynicism at the grassroots of America would say that uh, that grassroots isn't listened to, and particularly young people at the grassroots aren't listened to today, and whether or not they make a difference, and I think today would signify proof that uh, they have made a difference. And so we're here to say thank you for your bravery, and a lot of people that aren't standing here with you but are with you uh, in, in heart. Uh, speaking out on a difficult issue has been central to helping us write a bill to prevent future atrocities like you've read about. As chairman of the Judiciary Committee, I held a hearing last year on sexual abuse of young athletes. We heard from multiple gymnasts about the abuses they endured and the breakdown by adults in positions of trust who failed to intervene. That hearing underscored the need for legislation. I'm proud to be a co-sponsor and to move that bill through the Judiciary Committee and thank again Senator Feinstein for her leadership, but all of my colleagues who worked diligently on this bill. The bill is headed to the President for a signature when the House gets done, with, or the Senate gets done with it, and I couldn't have been uh, done uh, without the voices of the people that are up here and the people that testified uh, in Michigan last week. Their efforts will help protect young athletes everywhere. My work as chairman is not over after the president signs the bill. I will do the oversights that's necessary to make sure that the bill is properly executed. Thank you. That's helpful. Bill Nelson. The system failed them. USA Gymnastics failed them. The USOC failed them. And Michigan State failed them. We hope to put some safeguards in law. And ladies, thank you for coming forward. You're very courageous. Senator Frankel. First, I thank you all for being here, and of course, Senator Feinstein, for your leadership, and uh, the senators, and my uh, colleague in, in the House, uh, Susan Brooks. We are co-chairs of the Bipartisan Women's Caucus, and thank you, Susan, for leading this effort in the House and inviting me along with you. Uh, this is bipartisan. They say we don't have bipartisanship. This is bipartisanship at, at its best. Most importantly, thank you to these young gymnasts. And I just want you to know that many of us are wearing black tonight to the State of the Union in recognition of the Me Too movement. 
and you are just superb examples of, of, of for your courage coming forward and sharing your stories. I've, I watched the, I've watched the Olympics my entire life, especially the gym, gymnastics and the swimming. And I, I remember hold, I hold my breath at every movement, marveling at the extraordinary skill, perseverance, discipline, and dedication of young athletes, magnificent patriots uh, who gave up so much of their childhood, early rising, intense condition, conditioning, giving up social, youthful social activities uh, for competition and practice, suffering injuries to their growing bodies in order to represent our country on the world stage. And we've heard, many of us have heard uh, over the past few weeks, we've heard the stories of over 150 of, of women who shared their harrowing story of sexual abuse at the hands of U.S. National Olympic team doctor Larry Nasser, enabled by shameful adults who ignored or even silenced camp complaints. It, it may be too late to protect these very brave athletes who've come forward, uh, but now you are here to do the protecting. You thought you were just going to be champion of the Olympics. You are champion of human rights. <laughs> By coming forward, a monster is in prison, and new legislation requiring the prompt reporting and over oversight procedures will protect future athletes. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, Representative. Representative Brooks. Thank you, Senator Feinstein. It's such an honor to be here with you. Thank you for your leadership and Senator Collins for the work that they did in the Senate. And you've heard all about that. I also want to thank uh, my colleague and good friend, Lois Frankel. Um, we can, we as women do work together. We can work together on important issues facing the country. And nothing became more obvious to me than I w read in my hometown newspaper, the Indianapolis Star, what had happened to these gymnasts. I am the daughter of a coach, a football coach, that is. I was an athlete, tried gymnastics, but wasn't my sport. Um, was an athlete, I was the daughter of a college soccer player. And I know the value and the trust and the care and the love that athletes are supposed to have with their coaches, with their trainers, with their, the people they are supposed to trust. And what, with this bill that passed overwhelmingly in the House last night, and we hope to get it through the Senate today or tomorrow, and signed into law before these next Olympic Games, these women have given a voice to people who had been, to young people who had been the voiceless for far too long. I learned that Dominique had spoken out many, many years ago, but they didn't listen to her. People didn't listen to her. And Rachel, who was the one to speak to the Indianapolis Star, Rachel Denhollander, who spoke to the Star and started the story, and their voices were heard, and their voices were heard here in your nation's capital, and you have done so much for all sports, not just for gymnastics, for all sports. And so I'm very proud to be a part of this. I want to thank you for your courage. You've all been heroes to all of us as we've grown up watching the Olympics. You've all been our heroes. But now you are heroes in just so many ways to so many boys and girls and families. And I just want to thank you. And I look forward to this being signed into law. Thank you. Yeah. Well, well done, ladies. Well done. <laughs> and two of the athletes are going to speak for everyone here. And I'd ask Jeanette Antolin and Dominique Mosciano uh, to come forward and speak, and tell them a little bit about what your hopes and dreams were, too. Good morning. Um, I would first like to thank uh, Senator Feinstein, Senator Grassley, and Senator Thune for their diligent efforts with S-534. Before our strong army of 156 survivors stood up to tell their stories of abuse in Lansing, Michigan, Senator Feinstein was fighting for us. From day one, she was a listening ear 
and help to create change in amateur sports. Senator Feinstein, you have made us believe that our voices can be heard and will create real bipartisan change. I speak for survivors everywhere when I say we are eternally grateful for your unwavering support. Senator Grassley, we would like to thank you for your leadership in taking up this issue in the Judiciary Committee and for your respectful treatment and decency. S-534, Protecting Young Victims from Sexual Abuse and Safe Sport Authorization Act is the result of hard work of Senator Feinstein's and Thune. Again, there are no words to properly express our gratitude to you both. While we celebrate today and look forward to this law being enacted, there is still work to be done. In order to uncover how the USOC, USAG, and Michigan State University failed young athletes, we need them to first be transparent. Once this is accomplished, we can then begin to understand how such a heinous crime was allowed to go under the radar for 20 years. There must be an a thorough investigation. Time is not on our side. We must act now. Time is up. Every minute that goes by with unanswered questions, more innocent children could be harmed. We cannot live in a society where young children's lives are destroyed at the hands of trusted adults, be it doctors, coaches, administrations, university presidents. In the words of my sister survivor, Rachel Den Hollander, how much is a little girl worth? Think of the children in your lives. How much are those children's lives worth? Um, all of us sister survivors, it's been a long road, and I know speaking up very early was not an easy thing. Um, as Jamie Dancher would know, there was a lot of criticism, and actually having somebody like Senator Feinstein listen to our voices and make us feel like we were not only believed, but that we were being heard was amazing, and we can't thank her enough. So thank you so much. Thank you. First of all, I'd like to thank um, all of the courageous women who testified on behalf of this bill and also shared their personal stories in Michigan. Their impact statement were uh, um, unbelievable. And just really standing in front of their assaulter in court and facing them, it was just unbelievable to witness. Um, their strength is just amazing, and I have to give so much respect to each and every one of them. I'm profoundly moved by each of you. I continue to stand with you and support you. The passing of this bill is a huge victory. The implementation of proactive child athlete safety measures is a distinct and positive turning point in our sports and all sports history. This bill emphasizes the protection of all youth athletes with mandatory reporting when abuse, sexual or otherwise, is suspected. Thank you to the public servants who heard our voices and for the bipartisan support of this bill. Thanks to you and the voices of the survivors, we can now confidently say that future generations of children participating in sports will be safer. But there is still much work to be done. While new standards and legislation are set, it is more imperative than ever to work together to protect athletes and pr provide safe environments for them. Weeding out the abusers and bad actors and their enablers is a major part of that. I'm honored to have had a voice on the subject and am hopeful that we can begin to move forward to safer practices for all youth sports, including the beautiful sport of gymnastics because it really is beautiful at its core. And we can move forward in a positive way and begin the healing. Thank you so much to everyone who was a part of this journey. It's been a long time coming to finally see this day. And so thank you to each and every one of the supporters. Thank you. Well done. Well done, both of you. Are there questions? If not, are you press? Okay. I'm sorry I can't hear you. Why don't you stand up so we can hear you? Yes, it'll pass um, uh, by UC. Um, I think it's, it's been, it, the Senate bill went to the House. The House, I believe, is going to pass it back, and the vote would likely take place this afternoon or tomorrow. 
I'm sorry, I'm having trouble having hearing you. Maureen, if I, if I might, Senator yeah, Feinstein, um, over in the House, uh, the Chairman of House Energy and Commerce Committee, Chairman Greg Walden, um, has already indicated just this uh, past week that, um, that our committee does plan on having an oversight hearing involving the USOC and some of the national governing bodies, so, as well as Michigan State. So, um, and that letter, that request came from uh, Congressman Upton and Congresswoman Debbie Dingell, um, who also serve on energy and commerce. And so I don't believe anything has been set yet, but I do anticipate some future, um, at least a future hearing uh, on the oversight and what we, uh, how, as requested by the athletes, how this was allowed to happen and how we can ensure it doesn't happen going forward. Yes, please come forward. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Nancy Hogshead Makar. I'm an Olympic champion in swimming. You can see that one of us is not quite like the others here. <laughs> um, I run an organization called Champion Women. We provide legal advocacy for girls and women in sports. And this issue of sexual abuse in club and Olympic sports has been going on for about 20 years. And there are people here in this audience who have been working very hard, including back here, over 20 years to try to make it better within sports and frankly were unsuccessful. So I'd like to call out Jen Say, who wrote a book called Chalked Up. I'd like to call out Jennifer Spiegel and her and um, uh, Jessica Armstrong and together with some very elite gymnasts wrote a letter in 2012 that went to the United States Gymnastics and they were ignored. They wrote just comments that the kind of things that are in this legislation, the best gymnasts in the country were unable to do. In 2014, I represented 19 victims of sexual abuse in the sport of swimming. And as a result of that, we, we got Chuck Wilgus out of the Hall of Fame. Just a few months later, the Olympic Committee honored him, honored Chuck Wilgus. Rather than getting fired, rather than having anybody hold anybody account, nobody lost their job, nobody, the, no board position got lost. The big difference is, we had the Me Too movement, where people believed that it happened. And then we had these women here, the 156 women, who showed the depth of the emotional harm that happens as a result of sexual abuse, that I don't think until this moment, until they spoke, that they made it real for people, what this means. So not only do people know that sexual harassment and abuse is ubiquitous in women's lives, is a part of women's lives, but also just how damaging it was. They were so vulnerable and yet so powerful. I was so impressed with them. And because of them, this bill has, would pass the, the, uh, the Senate in November. And now here we have, and, it's, uh, and, and right after they spoke, bam, it passes the House. So all credit goes to them. It wouldn't have happened without so many people. But I really want to thank Senator Feinstein for uh, for really listening to the, to the people who came forward initially and, um, and to be able to make this issue happen. I've been involved in a, a little statute called Title IX for all of my professional career. Passed 45 years ago, the passage of this statute is just the beginning. We're at the starting line right now. So I, you know, everybody, it's going to take a village to change a culture of sport that values emotional harm that thinks that that's motivation. That's gonna take a sea change of different thinking of who can be on a board who came from a sport that grew up thinking that um, being physically and emotionally abusive was normal. And that's what sets somebody up for sexual abuse. It's not just gymnastics, it's not just swimming. It's in, trust me, every single sport and as I like to describe it is, it's kind of like ice cream. There's just 47 different flavors. 
of how it happens, what makes each sport uniquely vulnerable to sexual abuse, but it happens across sport. So um, I'm thrilled that we now have statutory protections for these 8 million children. And um, again, I want to thank all the people who've been involved for years and years, and the people who were involved in this effort, and particularly these athletes who made the, the change. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Just uh, to add, the uh, Bipartisan Women's Caucus in the House will be holding a series of hearings on sexual abuse and harassment in all industries across the country. We look forward to that. Yeah. I want to just go back to one thing that someone said. This isn't only USA Gymnastics. This exists throughout the country. I've heard in training camps. I've heard in gymnasiums. Uh, I've heard in all kinds of places where athletes gather and programs are put together. And I think on behalf of everybody, what I want to say is there is a very determined new day coming. We look forward to receiving information. We now know things we didn't know. We've got two powerful chairmen, Senator Grassley, Senator Thune. We have House members. We have 21 women in the Senate, not just two. So we're on your side. Our eyes are wide open now. So um, things better change. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you're so welcome. Thank you.